Um, and kind of wrapping things up in our last little segment is you know, how SDN plays a role into all of this. Um, you know, we work very closely with the ONF and the other ecosystem and partners that are defining a lot of the uh, software-defined network pieces. And one of the biggest challenges that we see today is if you have a controller, you know, not everybody is going open flow, but everybody is looking at some type of controller to help manage and program the network. If they're going white box, if they're using Cisco or, or Juniper, they all, Juniper with Contrail, Cisco with their uh, APIC controller, VMware with the NSX, there are controllers out there to manage the network. And if you're an IT administrator, and this tool we're gonna to talk about is really geared toward the in-depth user defining the network. And I have something configuring that controller to set up that network and the flows. How do I know that that's happening properly? And today, you don't wanna to have to bring up all your switches and configure everything. So Spirant offers a switch emulation capability. It could be open flow. Uh, we're adding uh, some of the PCE and some of the other aspects. So we can emulate that switch network and traditionally in the you know, thick client of the world, we give you a bunch of rows and tables to see that data, which is very difficult to visualize. Um, so what we've offered is, I like to call it my minority report, or that's a little old now, so it's my Tony Stark uh, hologram. So it's the ability to 3D render your topology. Uh, that, you've, that you're simulating in your SDN world. And you can actually rotate it around, zoom in, see which flows are over, <laughs> they'll turn red. Um, you can drill down and get, you know, in this case, we're gonna show open flow and you get the open flow statistics. You can overload it. You can change your flows from the controller network to see how that impacts uh, the traffic going through. So it's a way to visualize your network and uh, really debug uh, your flows that are being programmed. So I think, uh, Andrew, you want do a quick demo, and this is gonna be the last demo. We'll wrap up and uh, have lunch. Go up here, you sure? Ooh. Wrong guy. A little choppier than we were expecting. That's uh, you should the test the network for that to the internet, but <laughs> it, it is a little smoother. <clears throat> so if, if all the demos you saw previously, and by the way, I'm Andrew Bojack. I work in the cloud and IP uh, marketing team as well as all my peers here. And what I'm showing you is this topology rendering tool that we've just released. It is um, modeling uh, software-defined networks, and we are. Um, right now actively rotating. This is kind of one of the features. And if you look at it more closely, I apologize that the writing up here, I do have a pointer, is a little small. I can't do much about it because this is all completely virtualized. So I'm in my laptop. Even my software-defined networking tool is the emulator that Neil was just speaking about. And so it's a nine switch uh, topology there set up as a grid. So when you highlight a switch, and this is a current release version, the version we're going to be coming out with in December is actually going to support uh, not just the configuration information, which you see up there, which would be the data path ID, IP of the device, the name of the device if you support it, but also the interface statistics. So uh, currently we have config capability to render the information uh, about the switch from a configuration perspective, and then soon it'll be actual live statistics gathering. So that's about to come out pretty soon. Um, we have a number, the tool itself is specific to just topology rendering. We actually do discovery with it as well. So we're following all of the industry using uh, link layer discovery protocol, LDP. That's already in heavy use in SNMP. If you look at the current networks out there, they are all pretty much utilizing that to render a topology map in uh, the conventional networks using SNMP. So we're trying to show that in SDN that doesn't have to change. We already have a solution for that. More importantly, um, you know, there's the ability to just zero down on specific aspects of it. Like if I just want to see that set of switches that are connected to the one I have highlighted, I can get more information about what that looks like. The power of this is if you get a very large network. 
So this is a pretty small network. But imagine if you had a thousand devices in your topology. Um, that ability to just go to any particular one and quickly click, see what it's configured as, does it match what it's supposed to be, look and see what the interface statistics look like, is it looking as if it's getting too much uh, traffic in on a particular interface. All of this is just from the perspective of the map. So it's very much real time. Um, and the polling frequency can be configured. Right now, um, I have a very rapid polling frequency, but uh, we have the ability to uh, expand that out. So a larger topology, you'd want to do that just to make sure that uh, you're actually rendering the complete topology. So let me uh, demonstrate, for example, um, as I highlighted the statistics, uh, this little feature here we call Glow. This is just a way to, if there's a particular switch you feel is very important in a large topology. You can set up, you can just right click if you will. Oop, that's actually bringing it out. If you highlight the switch and right click, um, we have the ability to do a number of things. I know that's pretty small uh, right in this area here, but um, and I went one pass, sorry. So the attributes that you can set to each switch are like the color, whether it glows, you can actually make it disappear from the topology. Like maybe you have a topology you rendered, you know you took a switch out of it and you don't want to spend the time to fully re-render it, you can just delete it out of the topology and not have to worry about it showing up, even if it's like a, an offline switch for example. Um, as I said, we can zoom in, the rotating can be turned on and off, but we can also real-time re-render. So if a change happens in the network, and that's what I'll do, I'll bring up our other tool that's actually the switch topology emulator. So if I go in here and simply change the topology, um, and I can do that, for example, I know this is again apologizing how small it is, but I'm going to change from what is currently a grid into a ring, and then I just apply that change to my network. I can come back into our 3D topology rendering tool and in hopefully in about 12 or 13 seconds we should uh, change to a ring topology. So if things happen in the network, a switch disappears for unforeseen reasons or people just took a set down, this tool will actively live re-render without any changes uh, on the part of the tool itself. It's just pulling from the database. So you'll see here that um, and we do have the ability to kind of switch it around and, and grab things. It's probably easier to do that when it's not uh, rotating. But I can pivot, for example, on a particular device, stretch it around. Uh, if you get too out of place, you can uh, recenter. We also have the ability to get a little larger in a full clearing deployment. So. Right now it's all concentrated for the most part on open flow type networks, SDM, but we're open to, to change that to other types. And we're just trying to make sure that people realize that uh, it doesn't have to be all rows and tables because as the scale of these networks gets larger, obviously you have a, a problem with paying attention to that in, in a format like an Excel spreadsheet. So we should basically be able to move to the visual rendering type stuff in SDM networks just like we do in our current SNMP based topologies. So yeah. would this show examples of all kind of STN flows or is this just physical endpoints or is it... Uh, yeah. so the, the topology is of the devices, the endpoints itself, that's a good question. Yeah, so I don't so know the way can... the use cases for that in say the lab network where I'm just kind of prototyping and designing this, you know, it'll show you the topology and the endpoints, the traffic generated, that's from our side. That doesn't show up, but the flows will actually show up. Um, so we can show you if there is an inflection point. Uh, I'm going to switch to, you know, I have some screenshots of that in a different environment where we show you the flows and the impact of those flows. So we can show you in this particular case, you know, that, that middle node there has red because the flows are converging. There was a misconfiguration in the network and everything is going through that. So what we're showing you here is us simulating this environment, there's nothing stopping us from actually plugging into a real ODL controller running on a live network with a series of switches and get the same view. So again, we're focused right now in the lab work as people are designing this out, but in the live monitoring, you could deploy the same thing and see the flows and the impact of that uh, on the switch. Because then, even though you're seeing the devices over there, that that device could be a, a VTEP endpoint, for example. Um, it's not necessarily a physical 
Arista or something switch. This can be hypervisors, can be lots of different things that are running within the NFE network. Is that correct? Co correct. But this tool is kind of geared toward the SDN world, so that it has a switch ID as part of the open flow. Yeah. So we will only show the switches. Okay. These devices are switches in, in this particular okay. topology. And in this simulation, are the switches actually running switch processes? So if I'm running a routing protocol on the switch, and there and there's convergence, the individual switches run the processes as if they were live switches. So if you lift the hood up to our uh, Camaro here, you know, what you see, what we've deployed on our hardware and our virtual is containerized. So we have containerized switches. So we're actually running, say, OVS as an example, as a container, and we spin that up. So then we send our traffic through that. It will actually... So I have a live OVS DB. I have, is, this is... Uh... It, it, this is a real network yeah. that will actually route traffic and tell you that convergence. Is it only an OpenFlow based network or? As of right now, no. it's hooked up to ODL and, and OpenFlow, mm -hmm. but you know, enhancing it to support other networks is just. Such as, I mean, are we talking about VMware NSX? Are we talking about Cisco ACI or not that? Should not be any limit. We don't have that yet, but there's not a limit. And same thing with the, even if you wanted, possibly it's possible the edge devices, because everything's kind of discovered through LLDP and it's all based on what actually gets discovered by the controller. Right now the controller will not necessarily discover anything about the edge devices into the switches. They're more about the switches and the ports. There's no messaging right oh, now, for example, in OpenFlow. The dependency is the ability to run the virtualized platform. So if it's NSX and I'm running on DV switches, then I have to run this in a VMware environment where I can run DV switches. It, or, but if I'm in a open source environment and I'm running any, it can be Contrail, Open Contrail, for example, or anything that that runs within a Lin, on a Linux platform. Yeah. So right now, anything that runs currently, anything that runs OpenFlow, if NSX is configuring OpenFlow, fine, yeah. then we're good. If it's proprietary. Uh, open protocol that we see is happening, that's something that probably we won't be able to support because that's not something we can legally run. Yeah. Um, but as things become available, we can add them in and, and render that as well. I mean, something like Cisco ACI, I mean, that's going to be a, obviously that's a far more <coughs> closed, more proprietary shop, but this kind of tool, would that be able to generate that kind of modeling and it, view the flows as it goes and through? And the other tool that works with that is this, the hyperscale solution. This is geared specifically for kind of an ACI environment okay. that want to <coughs> test that out. But in a way, that's not looking quite at the network infrastructure. You're spinning up VMs, which is your agent built in, and the agents all talking to each other. Uh, you're not actually... The traffic pattern is configured based off of the flows that were defined by the... By those controller. VMs. <coughs> so the hyperscale solution is not just spinning up... And this might be a misunderstanding, so... It's whatever orchestration that you want to test. So it could be kicking, uh, spinning up VMs, but it also could be spinning up uh, NFV, uh, anything that's controlled by the orchestration layer. That's right. So we, we're a piece of that, right? Yeah. We're the VMs. We, and then the customized part is the traffic pattern. You know, they have specific flows, specific policies put in place. It's like in the APIC example, I have my ACI. I configured that policy as I have these VMs that can talk to these VMs over this VX LAN tunnel. We make sure that all works because they are the, it's a, it's a tight configured control for them. Right, that's the whole point of it. They can configure and manage everything in it. Because going forward, I mean, currently in a, in a non-SDN environment, that, that traffic flow is basically statically defined. Okay, you're using a routing protocol or something like that, but that's a, a sta static traffic pattern that a network engineer can understand exactly where their traffic is going to go. Right. And then if NFV environment, when those tunnels are literally being created on the fly, um, <clears throat> You know, it's going to be, it's far harder to look at the traffic flow and understand that a packet from this ESX, well, not, yeah, an ESX host to another ESX host or to an endpoint where it's actually going in the network. Correct. Yeah. Okay. This will help. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. Not sure. Yeah. Okay. We're, uh, you know, wrapping up. I have, uh, you know, just a couple closing slides here. And, you know, I like to say that, you know, the NFE and SDN, that's a big focus, big transition, big change that's happening today in the world. And, it's like a house. If it's not built on a foundation that's solid, 
from you know, uh, cloud infrastructure, SLA, or uh, you know, the virtual infrastructure and understanding what it can do, you're gonna build a house that is on a very unstable foundation and that will crack, that will fall, you'll have problems. So you know, from Spiron's perspective, we're focused on the infrastructure and you know, providing new tools, new solutions to help vet that and benchmark and understand what that is so that the next generation network can be built on top of it. So we want to make sure that you can you know, scale up higher, uh, spin up faster, and serve up more reliably. Um, and our solutions that we have are really focused on three areas. The performance and benchmarking, the management and orchestration, and lastly, the security and reliability. Um, I, I did not cover it in this discussion, but you have to always test. We have security solutions you know, throughout Spirant's uh, product portfolio. And as I talk to customers and carriers, et cetera, it's important that you test always under attack. We can generate the attack, malware, et cetera. Always assume you're going to be under attack. Make sure infrastructure works while you have a DDoS, while you have malware, uh, and make sure that the firewalls protect that, because you don't want to do that as an afterthought, because you don't know what impact that will have onto your infrastructure. Um, the last bit here is we're trying to help move the NFV along a little faster. And we wanted to do that in, one, a cost-effective manner, and two, in a way that could you know, make more sense, wrap things up into methodologies rather than, hey, here's a bunch of toolkits. So we've got this wrapped up into this starter kit. And with NFV, everyone thinks I can do everything virtual. I, can, I don't need test tools. I can just use iPerf. I can use uh, just my open source tools. And what we found talking with a lot of these customers and what I realize is network traffic is not generated and terminated within a data center. You're always going to have external you know, traffic coming in. And if you think back to the OSI stack, you've got to test all the way through the fabric. So there's still a need for hardware. It doesn't have to be the big, bad, expensive boxes that we have. We have these small appliances now that do the same thing in a much more cost-effective manner. Bundle everything in with the traffic center, with Tamiva, with the cloud testing, uh, with the topology generation. We have a, something that's bundled all up together, wrapped up into a series of methodologies that we can just go and spin up. So it's just something that we have to help move the NFV and virtualized transition a little bit faster for our customers. So ultimately, that's closing time for us. Uh, it's the top of the hour. Uh, we want to make sure that we can help the world connect um, as this transition happens. It's scary uh, it's, uh, for everybody as they move from the known to the unknown. So I appreciate everyone's time. You know, if you have any other questions, we can uh, you know, take that offline.